Hi, I'm G. Welcome to my art channel and this is my painting of an orange rose using watercolour pencils. So you can see that I've drawn out the rose on the smoothest paper I could find, which was 190 GSM cold press. Uh, it's the Cotman Windsor & Newton variety. And here you can see me adding the very first bit of colour. So I'm adding some deep cadmium using Derwent's watercolour pencil range. And I'm adding it on quite lightly as just a sort of base colour. And I'm choosing one of my smallest petals first of all to try and make sure I get stuff right before I move on to the bigger petals and the larger part of the flower. So you can see me using a slightly darker colour, adding some Crimson Lake now in the hope that when I add the water that I can blend together that Crimson Lake and that deep cadmium and get a nice kind of of yellow into orange kind of uh, flavor, you know, blend of colors going on here. And the brush that you can see me using here to blend those colors together is a size three uh, round sable hair brush. And I'll alternate between the size three sable hair and also a, a synthetic size three as I go through the, the piece of work. The, the sable one has got a slightly better pointed tip and the um, synthetic round has got a slightly fatter tip and it's good for doing slightly larger areas or some of the larger petals. So having got that smaller petal out of the way and thinking those two colors are all right, let me start doing a bigger petal here and adding some more colors and getting a richer sort of use of colors here. So I'm using the same colors as before. I'm using the deep cadmium, I'm using the crimson lake, but now I'm introducing a couple of others. I'm using this really nice dark imperial purple and I'm using it sparingly and I'm also introducing a little bit of red here using this deep vermilion and I'm just using that because the petals are beginning to get that more orangey flavor and I'm thinking that the red will allow me to mix with that yellow and get a deeper brighter orange kind of color. So you might be looking at this and thinking, it looks quite light. He's not put a lot of color, a lot of pigment on. Uh, and you're right, because when I've used watercolor pencils before, what I found is that if I put on too much color too soon, I would get a sort of weird greasy kind of quality when I tried blending those colors together. Uh, so I'm really trying not to get that this time. So I'm putting it on quite light to begin with in the hopes that I can layer it up and make the colors a bit darker or richer at a later stage. So after trying out the color scheme on a few of the smaller petals, I start to do a larger petal here, which is in quite a bit of shadow. So I think, right, I am going to start putting in a bit more color. I am going to layer it up a bit more. So I'm using exactly the same four colors that I've used previously, layering all four of those on. And you can see me using a lot more color, a lot more pigment on the paper this time before I go in with the brush and before I start blending and mixing those colors together on the paper. And um, it worked a little bit better this time. I've, you know, I'm still fairly cautious. I didn't put the colors on half as thickly as, as I used to when I used to use watercolor pencils quite a bit. I used to really slap it on and then wonder why it was going all greasy. So I've sort of, I'm trying for a sort of happy medium, a bit of a balance here between putting them on too thick, but you know, putting them on too lightly is not gonna work either. So I'm being, you know, a little bit cautious, but pushing it about as much as I think that I can. So here you can see me just blending these colors back together, getting down into this sort of darker area here where I know I've got some purple that I've just got in there. So I just need to sort of unlock that, blend that in and get that in with the red. So I'm getting a, a much stronger, um, richer shadow down here on the underneath of this petal. So at this stage, I'm already giving myself a reminder about why I don't use watercolor pencils as much as the other water-based media that I have. And it's because that they seem to leave a kind of a grainy kind of finish that I just can't seem to get rid of. Now, there's how it was looking at this point where I got those small petals done. And then I'm like, right, okay, I've got the right colors. I'm gonna launch into this. But more on that kind of grainy quality of um, watercolor pencils, I'm not, just not a big fan of it. I just find that they seem to mark the paper and then I get the brush in there and I try and blend them out and it just doesn't seem to quite come out. Now I am using rougher paper with a bit of tooth, this 190 GSM paper, and it's a cold press. I'm thinking, I'm guessing that maybe with a hot press paper, um, a smoother hot press paper, maybe it will be better and it will be a different story. So I really do need to give them a bit of a chance and get some and do a different video in the future where I use hot press paper with the watercolor pencils and see if I encounter the same kind of problems. Um, one of the things that I notice using them again as well is how quickly they seem to dry. You don't get as much time to work with the color once you activate it as you do normal watercolors 
or even watercolor markers, uh, I found that I had to work super quick and get a lot of water on the brush at the start and kind of load and try and blend with that entire brush full of water rather than go back and dip the brush into the water and come back because I was already encountering a bit of a drying line if I tried to do that. But one of the sort of pluses that I found out while I was using them was that they layer up really, really well, um, possibly because of that, you know, quite quick drying. Um, and I found that if I did something and it was too pale, I could go back on it later, put down some extra color, blend it with the water, and then move it around over the surface. And it wouldn't pick up the color that was already there and, you know, blend the two together, which is sometimes what you find with normal watercolors. So they had a kind of a layering quality that I could see would be a real benefit, a real bonus, um, if you wanted to really work your work, uh, your painting over and over and over, you know, really start light and really build up those layers and, and sort of get that richness from that. They would work really well for that. Even with some of those issues going on, I was still enjoying the, the challenge of doing this piece of work. I mean, I rarely use watercolor pencils nowadays. Uh, the, the Crab Claw Pincer, one of my previous YouTube videos, was the first time I'd used them in a very, very long time to do a piece of work. And this, I was trying for a slightly more, um, you know, good quality finish with this rather than it just being a sketchbook piece of work. So I was enjoying the, the, the rich kind of colors and the blending that I could get out of the four colors that I'd chosen to use here. You know, usually I limit my palette to maybe two or just three colors, especially when I'm using watercolor markers. So I was quite enjoying really chucking all four colors on here and then, you know, watching the blends and seeing the kind of uh, the color variety that I could get from these. And also you can see in the close-ups and in the other shots here how much uh, layering up I'm managing to do. You know, the, the strength that I talked about earlier. Once I put on a base color, I can go in and I can add a little bit more on top of it and just tweak it with a brush. I can deepen and darken those shadows, uh, but I can also enrich some of those areas which I feel were too pale to begin with and don't have enough of the rich kind of uh, cadmium yellow that you can see me adding just there on the top petal. So this painting was very much a, a refamiliarization process for me, you know, getting used to this media again after a long, long layoff and almost rediscovering, relearning its kind of strengths and weaknesses and how I could make it work for me and what I had to be wary of and, and things that weren't going to quite work for me. Um, so like I said, I'm using Derwent's watercolor pencils here uh, and I really liked them. They were very soft. The, the, the sort of pigment came off the tip really easily. But it did make me curious to see what other watercolor pencils on the market might be like because obviously I see videos to do with uh, Karen Dash and Faber-Castell and, you know, some of those sound as though they might perhaps not have the same uh, kind of drawback, should we say, that I felt that the current ones that I was using um, had. So as I'm getting ready to pretty much finish the flower, what you can see me doing here is some slightly fussy extra layers in areas, just enriching some of the colors and also trying to get a bit more yellow on that before I move into a bit of a change of pace, and that is the green leaves and the stalk that are underneath. And for this, I choose a set of greens. So I'm using grass green and mineral green as a darker green, but I'm also reintroducing one of the colors that I've used on the petals. In the shadows of the petals, I use crimson lake, and I'm using crimson lake on top of my leaves as well to deepen some of those shadows area and the idea being that um, if I just used a whole bunch of different colored greens uh, on the leaves there might not be a bit of a link between the leaves and the petals of the flower but by using a shadow color that I've used on the flower in my leaves as well there's hopefully a kind of uh, a kind of core theme running through the piece of work and a sort of a color link between the leaves and the flower that's at least the hope you can tell me in the comments below whether you think that was achieved or not, or whether you think I should have just gone in with a whole bunch of dark greens and, you know, forget about this whole Crimson Lake idea. I should mention here a little thing about pencil lines and watercolors as well. I'm not a massive fan of when I can see my pencil lines that I've done the drawing with um, as a kind of outline around my painting. It really does bug me. Uh, so what I tend to try and do is, is hide those pencil lines as best of all by, you know, making sure that my color goes right up to that pencil line and sometimes just overlaps it a little bit. Um, one of the other things that I do before I start the drawing is go over the drawing with a rubber and really try and take those pencil lines down a notch. Um, it wasn't so noticeable with the leaves, but on the petals of the flower, you know, I could see some kind of like 
pencil edges um, where it should just be color and that can be really frustrating and really annoying. Um, so one of the things that I was thinking at this point as the, the picture was nearing its end was thinking, right, am I going to put a background in or not? Because I share the photograph at the end and you'll see that there is quite a strong green background behind this flower that you might think helps it stand out a bit more. But I was looking at the picture and I really just wanted to let it dry and then go along those pencil lines with the rubber and take out as many of the pencil lines as possible and just let the colors of the flower speak for itself um, and sort of display it in that kind of um, flower on a white background, that very botanical illustration um, kind of approach. Uh, and I really wanted to see if that would work because it's not my usual way of doing things you know if you've seen my pictures before you know that I whack in a background all of the time uh, and people are sometimes like oh not sure about the background and then oh wow that worked really well kind of thing so I realize I'm taking a risk with this one with deciding perhaps not to put uh, a background on it but it's mainly so I can just get at those pencil lines <laughs> and really try and erase them as much as possible so we're almost at the end, ready for the big reveal. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of the painting, what you thought of the video, and my thoughts on watercolor pencils. And there you go, there's the two side by side. And when I saw this slide for the first time, the first thing I thought was like, my picture on the right needs to be a lot more yellow. So I'm thinking already that I might return to it pretty soon and make those revisions. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and please follow me on any of the main social media channels uh, under the handle G Art. And thanks very much for watching.